Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released macOS 14 Sonoma. This is available around the world at the same time and is out for everyone on supported devices. And this year, Apple is supporting iMac 2019 and later, iMac Pro 2017, MacBook Air 2018 and later, MacBook Pro 2018 and later, along with Mac Pro 2019 and later, Mac Studio 2022 and later, and Mac Mini 2018 and later. All of those devices are supported. Anything else, unfortunately, Unfortunately, is not. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what's new as there's a lot to cover here, but I'm not going to cover everything that's in this compared to iOS 17 as well. iOS 17, iPadOS 17 and Sonoma add a lot of consistencies with changes with messages and more. So I'll cover what's new specifically to the Mac. Now, the first new feature is if we go into our system settings, there's some changes here. And the first major change here is if maybe we go to accessibility, We've got a back button now. There's a back button here at the top. Nothing huge, but it's a slight change. But one of the major changes here is if we go to wallpaper, Apple has added over 100 new wallpapers. So as you can see, I had some of my own photos here. Of course, we can switch between light and dark mode and automatic, but we have a bunch of really nice ones here. So we have them categorized as well with dynamic wallpaper and more. So as you can see, we have Sonoma Horizon. If I click on that, it changes. And if I lock the screen, let me minimize this here. If I lock the screen, it starts to animate, it starts to move. And as I unlock the screen using touch ID or my password, it slows down, stops and becomes the background. This is something we have with all of these here with the little play button next to them. So we have California's Tembler range, Redwoods from above, many things that we have on Apple TV as well. And you'll see there's 61 of them just in landscape alone. So as we scroll down, there's a ton of different ones such as Patagonia River. Some you may have seen before, but each one you click on will have to download and will take a little bit of time. Now the wallpaper is finally updated. It took quite a while as these are pretty large files. But again, if I lock the screen, it will start to animate. Let's lock it again here. Give it a second. You'll see it will start to animate and move. You can see it in the water here and it may take a moment to start up, but it's very subtle on this one and then it unlocks and slows to a halt. Now we not only have these landscapes, we have cityscapes. There's 30 different ones of those, tons of different things here, everything from Dubai to New York City, London, Hong Kong. We also have underwater, 21 different ones here, 22 different versions of Earth, there's also shuffle aerials. We can shuffle all of them as well. If we want this to change regularly, we can have that do it on its own. So any one of these categories, we can just shuffle all or just have it shuffle landscape, city or anything else we want. So it's really nice that you've got these options and then we can turn off screensaver or not. If we go to screensaver, the same sort of thing is true here. You'll see screensaver timing is currently set to never. So you would need to have these activate, but basically they're the, the exact same thing and they'll just turn into screensavers or you can use your wallpapers to automatically turn into that by themselves. On the Mac, we've had widgets for many years. That's something we had back when Steve Jobs showed Mac OS off. But now if we slide in from the side, they used to be stuck here on the side. But if I click and drag, I can place them anywhere on my desktop. So maybe I want the world clock in the middle. I can place it in the middle. I can put it down in the bottom right. It will snap back into the widgets. I can close the widgets, put this down in the bottom right, or I can put it near the other one and it will snap next to it. So it's sort of lined up, place it wherever you'd like. And it's super nice. One other thing you can do with widgets though, is if I bring this in and click on edit widgets, Within my widgets, you'll see here, if I scroll down, I have apps on here that I don't necessarily have on my Mac. It will now use the apps that you have on your iPhone with iOS 17 and update it for you. So if we go to Lumi, for example, give it a moment to load. It's taking a moment, it refreshes, bring this over here, it updates on its own, pulling that data directly from my iPhone. So it's on my iPhone, it's not even on the Mac. If you go into the launch pad, look for that app, it's just not here. So what it's doing is pulling that data as long as it's close to your Mac or on the same Wi-Fi network. Again, we can do that with another widget. So if we scroll down here on the left, you'll see maybe a car that you have a widget for, or go back up, maybe you wanna use Spotify. You can use that for anything and it takes a moment to refresh sometimes. But if I want this here from Spotify, give it a moment, it refreshes. Now I've got my Spotify widget here, even though I don't have Spotify installed. So it's super nice that you can place these wherever you want. And if I want 
a stack over here of widgets, I can place them over here, wherever you'd like. And if we open up Safari, which is the next app that's been updated, you'll see that the widgets fade into the background. They sort of become translucent. So if I click on the desktop, they come to the forefront. If I go back to Safari, they sort of fade into the background. It's a nice touch to sort of get them out of your view and have them be less distracting. But of course, if you click on your desktop, you'll have relevant information. Now in Safari, it has the same sort of updates that we get with iOS as well. For example, we have personal, we also have not just these specific tab groups, but we also have profiles across all OSs. So we can switch to the work window and have it have something different, or we can switch to home. We can have relevant information in all of them, depending on what you're doing throughout the day. So if I want to switch back to personal, now I have a whole set of other tabs that are specific to that along with extensions as well. They all sync up. The same is true with even your search engine that you pick. You want Google on your home. Maybe you're using Bing somewhere else, or maybe DuckDuckGo. It's up to you. Another thing you can do with Safari on Mac this year is you can make this act as though it were actually an app and place it in your dock. If we go up to the top and go to file under file, we can click add to dock. And once we click add to dock, we can name it, click add, and it becomes its own app here. So if I click on this, it will open with a simplified window and act as though it's its own separate app. You can do this with important websites that you want just to jump right into quickly all of the time. And if I wanted to go directly, maybe to the Mac page, I could do the same thing, go to file, add to dock. You'll see it says Mac, apple.com slash Mac, click add. And if we open this one, it jumps right to Apple's Mac website. And then in the top, you'll see open in web app. So this is really nice, very convenient. If you have a bunch that you want to use, of course, you can just quit those and then get rid of them altogether if you want to. So that's something that's super convenient. I'll use all the time now with Mac OS Sonoma. Now let me move these over to the side here. And one thing that Apple has updated this year is video calls and FaceTime. If you have a Mac studio display, or maybe you're using your iPhone with continuity camera, you can actually adjust the frame while you're making that call. So let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. So now I'm connected with my iPhone 11 and I wanted to show you the new features on the Mac. So I'll set the iPhone down just so you can see those. Now, depending on what camera you're using. And if you click this box at the top, this should be available when you're using a studio display or continuity camera, not only in FaceTime, but things such as zoom or maybe something else you're using. So if we go to center stage or reactions, we can turn this off, turn it back on. Of course, then we have portrait light, turn it back on. You'll see it's messy back there, but I can blur that out if I don't want it. Studio light, makes it a little nicer. And we also have reactions and those reactions are something that we've had on iOS for a while. And I can hold two thumbs up and get a little reaction in the background. You can hold one thumb up and it will give another one. You'll see a thumbs up, thumbs down, back to thumbs up and it actually recognizes it and continues. You can also click the buttons here too. So same sort of things. If you want to use those, you have mic modes as well. So you have standard voice isolation and wide spectrum. So you have all of these different options. And then if I click this little F stop button here, it's got the same sort of thing. And then of course I have desk view and more. So lots of really nice features this time around. And then of course I can adjust the window as well for the presenter. So if I want to click small, I can have an overlay while I'm sharing my screen. So if I want to share my screen, share this screen here, give it a second, you'll see, I have a little hover icon of myself where I'm just over the top of whatever I'm sharing in the screen. I can make it larger. You'll see there in the screens behind me in this little window here. And you can also see that on my iPhone where I'm sharing it as well. So it gives all of that information and shows that in a little nicer look. If I go to studio display camera, I've got all of my modes and then you can of course allow control and more. So this is really nice. You've got all of these different presenter options where you have your own little window over the top of your screen, or you can be in front of it and more. So this is something that's available on Mac OS Sonoma. So it's really nice that they've added this. You can use this again in things like zoom and more. Now you may have heard that there's a new game mode available for Mac OS Sonoma and Apple actually says game mode automatically gives games top priority on the CPU and GPU of your Mac, lowering usage for background tasks. And it dramatically reduces latency with wireless accessories like AirPods and your favorite controllers for responsiveness. You can feel if you see the little seven here, we can see what it says, where it actually says that it's available on Mac computers with Apple Silicon 
compatible game controllers work with selected games and are sold separately. So some of these features should work automatically on some games. I've yet to see it work. Maybe that will show up in the day or so, but it really isn't something I've seen take place on its own while I'm playing a game. Now, additionally, the keyboard has an update as well, just like iOS 17. If I go into notes and when you're typing autocorrect should be more accurate. And if I tap space, it auto completes. That's a new feature. Now we've had some of this before, but autocorrect has a new algorithm and there's inline predictive text. So would you like to go to the beach tomorrow? And you'll see it's trying to autocorrect everything. So this is really nice. It works very well. And there's also improved dictation as well if you're using this. So maybe you're using this and speaking directly to your Mac. That's been improved where you can type along with it just like you can on your iPhone. Now, in order to use dictation, you'll need to enable this under your keyboard settings. So turn that on. We'll enable it and then it should work. So we can use that and there's a shortcut for this. So you can press control twice to activate it, press the microphone button, whatever you would like. So let's go ahead and do this. And as I'm using it, this is a new message that I'm using on an Apple Silicon Mac with Mac OS Sonoma. And that should be improved. And at the same time we can type. So if I say this is Mac OS Sonoma, 14 and I am showing you the new features. So you can use it at the same time all together and it works really well. Apple has updated privacy as well. If we go into system settings, go to privacy and security, scroll down, you'll see that we have an option for sensitive content warning. If we go into this, we can actually enable this and it will use the on device neural engine to detect things that could be explicit and blur them out instead of showing them to you. You don't have to have this enabled, but you can have it enabled and it can work across different things such as contacts and messages. And then of course you can improve it. You can read more about it here and it will tell you exactly how it works. It's all on device. No information is sent off of the device. And if you want this turned on for a child, of course you could do that as well. Additionally, there's updates to communication safety for children, and that has been available under your screen control options before as well. If we go into that, you'll see there's communication safety. We can click on this and then enable it, and you'll see it says it can detect those same sort of photos and things before they're set and viewed on your child's device. So it can provide guidance, give them more information, and then they can see maybe resources about it and go ask an adult or someone else they trust to make the choice whether or not they want to view that information. Again, all done on device. It's turned off by default. You can turn it on if you'd like to. Additionally, there's updates and accessibility under accessibility. Just like we have an iOS 17, I've talked about this as well. We have live speech and personal voice. You can use your own personal voice shared across devices to actually communicate with someone and type the spoken words. So I showed this in my iOS 17 video, but it's available here as well. You'll see it's not set up to share across devices. Once it will, it will sync across devices and then I'll have my voice here, but you can create one, put in your password and then walk through 150 phrases, which will create and generate your own personal voice. It usually takes a couple days to generate, then you can use it with live speech. And if we go back to live speech, you'll see here, if we enable this, we can now type to speak. Hi, this is Aaron. Hi, this is Aaron. And then we can choose different voices to use for this as well. We have system voices. I have my own personal voice. So let me show you that. We'll see if it uses my personal voice. Hi, this is Aaron. So it's close, not perfect, but you can recreate this over and over and you have all of these different options here as well. So if you want to use that, it's available across all devices now. Additionally on Mac OS, Apple has updated hearing devices. So you can now actually pair iPhone compatible hearing devices to your Mac as well. You need a MacBook Pro 2021, Mac Studio 2022, and Mac computers with M2 chip. So it doesn't necessarily work on everything, but it will work on available devices that are supported with those compatible hearing devices. If we go into system settings, there's an update for battery for some specific users. In particular, battery health management has been updated on 
13-inch MacBook Airs with M2 chips to better optimize long-term battery health. Why it's specific to that, I'm not sure, but you can see the energy mode, the battery health is normal. I'm at 93% on the 16-inch M1 Max MacBook Pro, and you have all of, these inf all of this information and this enabled. So that's everything that we would normally have. And then, of course, on power adapter, not really any changes here, but they've optimized it for the 13-inch MacBook Air. Now that's pretty much it other than some changes within the menus of different things within Mac OS Sonoma, but those are all of the major features. Of course, there's different things with messages where stickers have been updated. So we've got our menu on the side here. We've got our stickers and you'll see stickers here. We can create them. We can use ones that are syncing across my iPhone right now. So if I want this one, I can just drag it here and it will work just like it does in iOS. So if you haven't seen the iOS video, be sure to check it out along with iPad OS is it's all the different things that it can do. It's about an hour and 15 minutes long, but all of those features are available here as well. But I think the biggest change here are the widgets and the wallpaper. The wallpaper is super nice to have and have it across everything. So let me know if there's anything that you found that you really like about Mac OS Sonoma. It's not a giant upgrade this year compared to last year or other years, but I really like a lot of these new wallpaper. Let me know what you think of Mac OS Sonoma in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.